Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time seeing me, hi, I'm Jennifer. I make new videos every single week, sometimes multiple times a week, like this week. I would love for you to hit the subscribe button down below. This is Goober, he's my little corgi. He's gonna keep me company today. So back in like February or March, I did do a video of everything that I was bringing and everything I packed. Although I think that's helpful, it's not as helpful as hearing from someone who actually finished the trail and what they found helpful and what they wish that they just left at home because it took up space. I hope you guys enjoy it, give it a thumbs up, and again, hit that little subscribe button down below and I would really, really appreciate it. But let's go ahead and get on into it. So when I was booking everything online, I was in contact with this one woman in the company and she did send me a list of recommended things to bring and I did read through the entire thing and certain things I was like, nah, I don't need to bring that. Bring a flashlight. I ended up bringing a regular little flashlight that was like three inches long because I didn't want like a big heavy chunky one so I brought like a small little like handheld flashlight and in the list she specifically mentioned to bring a headlamp and my husband bought one and he was like do you want one too and I was like no it's okay I'll just use the one we have you're gonna be hiking at night we woke up every morning around I want to say 7 but I know on the last day we woke up at like 3 30 the last like two hours to Machu Picchu was just like a mad dash of people like running through the darkness. Not only did I bring like a handheld crappy little flashlight, but it was so freaking dull. I didn't realize how dull my flashlight was until I had it next to my husband and his was like beaming. So bring a headlamp. Sandals. I went in March. I thought like you're gonna be hiking all day in your hiking shoes when you get to camp you want to like let your feet breathe and let your feet relax but honestly it was cold and I wore sandals for maybe 10 minutes my toes were frozen I was like no I want to wear my thick comfy socks and personally my hiking boots were really comfortable so I ended up just bringing the sandals along the entire time the very last day at like 3 in the morning um, the porters and everyone kind of got together. They said like if you want to leave anything they like donate shirts or whatever And I ended up leaving my sandals because I knew I wasn't gonna use them I at that point I was just like happy to get rid of them depends on what time of year you're going I went in the rainy season. I went in the cold er season. I did not use them So if you're going around the same time that I did I didn't use them. It could be a personal preference It's just cold so so if I would repack and know what I don't now I would definitely leave sandals at home. Sunblock. That is another thing that was on the list and I was like, I don't need sunblock. I got my hat. I'll have my shoulders covered. I'm not gonna get burnt. We got to Peru a little bit early and we spent like the first two days walking around Cusco, but my scalp got burnt. Like, you know how like if you part your hair, like the skin that's showing. To be honest, it was cloudy. Both my husband and I, we got a little bit of sunburn, nothing like too big. We ended up having to buy sunscreen in Cusco right before the trek because we were like, we spent like four hours walking around and we we're getting burnt. We should probably get some. So really glad we did because I mean, there are a few hours every single day that the sun comes out. So bring some sunscreen, whether you think you're gonna need it or not, bring at least a little one. A hat, bring a hat because even if it's not sunny, I'm so glad that I brought my my ball cap. I brought like a little, um, what's it called, dry fit material. I used it every single day, pretty much all day, whether it was sunny and for obvious reasons why you wear a hat. But also the third day it was so miserable because it was raining. It was raining all night and then we woke up and it was still raining and it was raining past lunch. It probably didn't stop until like two. So I'm so glad that I had my hat for that day as well because I was able to like keep the rain out of my eyes and then I put my hood on top of it too. So my face was good, but to be honest, everything else got wet. <laughs> So definitely bring a hat. Poncho. This is something that, again, it was on the list and I thought, I don't need a poncho. I have my waterproof jacket. I have my rainproof, my rainproof cover on my backpack. I'm good. <sighs> no, no. If I would have gotten a good quality poncho, I would have been so much happier on day three. My pants that were supposed to be water resistant completely soaked through my rain jacket that was rain waterproof 
completely soaked through. My rain cover on my backpack completely soaked through. Things that were in my bag got wet and then we got to camp and our sleeping bags were a little damp and some socks and some everything that you want to change into that was supposed to be dry. It was a little damp and it was just, that was by far the most miserable day just because I was stubborn and I didn't want to spend two dollars on a poncho. Bring a poncho, definitely. A sleeping bag. I did not bring a sleeping bag, but I wish I did. I ended up renting it from the company. In my head, we're doing a hiking trail. It's a long, like, multi-day hike. I thought, like, going into, like, stores like REI, you see sleeping bags that can be squished in, like, a little ball. And in my head, that was the size of sleeping bag that I was going to get that was gonna be, like, super light and super small and compact. So I left my sleeping bag at home that, in my opinion, was smaller. When we got there, we were given our sleeping bags and it was like this big. It took up the entire bottom space of my backpack. If you have a small sleeping bag, bring that. But if you don't have a small compact one, just go ahead and leave that at home. Don't even bother bringing it on the airplane or dragging it through ever whatever country you're going through. Just go ahead and leave it at home and rent it. So it depends on what kind of sleeping bag you have. The day before the trek, we had a meeting that our little group was going to get to get together and our tour guide was going to be there. They kind of just went over some certain things, what to bring, things to leave what to expect. One of the things that was such a big deal was trekking poles. And neither my husband or I have ever hiked with trekking poles. Like our group was all for trekking poles. Our tour guide, he said everyone uses the trekking poles. Whether you're going uphill, it's helpful. Downhill, it's slippery. We sort of, we bought into it and we ended up renting last minute a pair of trekking poles. We did not use them one time. We try to use them like literally a minute. If you're not used to using trekking poles, don't even bother. Just, just leave the trekking poles if you are not used to them. Because if you're not used to them, they're not gonna be helpful. But if you hike normally using them, obviously go ahead and rent them. I would probably say leave your personal ones at home and then bring them or rent them. Oh yeah? No. 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 Baby wipes. I did not know this before packing. I could not find anywhere on the internet, anywhere on YouTube, anywhere on their personal website saying that there are actual showers at your campsites every night. I did not know that. Granted, you're camping with like, I don't know how many, but like a lot of tents. And there's only like a couple of showers. So if you want to like wait in line, if you want a cold shower, cause there's no hot water, um, you can obviously opt for that, but if you feel like you can just grunge it out, go ahead and just use wet wipes or baby wipes, then I would definitely say bring them. My husband and I use them. We took a shower on the first day because the first day we had hot water. I don't know. We just kind of was like, eh, we're okay. We, we can grub it out. It's all right. But if you want to take a shower, you can go ahead and leave the baby wipes at home. If you plan on not taking a shower and <laughs> you're kind of going to grub it out, grub it out, grunge it out, whatever, then definitely bring baby wipes. Swimsuits. I did watch a few videos before leaving. A couple of companies, they go to this like hot spring area in the town right before the trail. It depends on which company you go with, but just make sure you can just email whoever you're talking to. Do you recommend bringing a swimsuit? You're not going to need one on the trail. There's not like you're, there's not going to be like a stream of water or a river that you're going to bathe in. If there's going to be a shower, there's going to be a shower that's enclosed, that's private. You're going to be good. You don't need a swimsuit unless your specific tour at your specific booking company says we're going to this hot spring before then. So that's the only reason. So to me, I did not go to the hot spring. I did not need a swimsuit. Mine just took up space. So I would have left my swimwear at home. Towels. So this kind of goes in with baby wipes. If you're planning on taking a shower or your company is going to the hot springs before the trek, then obviously you need one of those like small microfiber towels and they do sell them at Cusco. There's actually surprising a lot of stores that sell like backpacks, hiking gears, trekking poles, hiking boots, hiking pants, everything that you can find. Depending on what category you want this to go to, towels. 
TP is my next one. Toilet paper. If you don't know what TP is. The porters don't carry toilet paper. The bathrooms on the trail do not have toilet paper. The only time and the last time that you're gonna see toilet paper is the day before the trail and the day you're dead with the trail. They do have actual like American style toilets with toilet paper at Machu Picchu. But other than that, on the trail, they're, I don't know like the correct term. It's like that style of bathroom that you see like on Indian documentaries and like, like, you know, where it's, it's basically, you walk into the stall and there's just a hole. I only brought half a roll and I was like, oh, a half a roll for four days for both my husband and I, that should be good. We barely made it through. <sighs> We were like, we got to the end and we were like counting squares of the little things like definitely toilet paper is a luxury on the trail. Do not expect to find it anywhere. So definitely bring toilet paper. It is necessary. So a quick few things to mention. Every single company is different. It is the same trail and you're staying at basically the same camps. I am going to make a video of my experience of the Inca Trail. And in that video, I'm going to talk about the showers and the bathrooms and the camps and a little bit more like in depth like the type of food to expect the tents to expect all that stuff and like my overall experience and another really quick thing if you are like me and my husband where you are flying to peru with only a carry-on but there is a post office that you can go to and mail any unessential things so while i was in cusco there's obviously a lot of tourist shops to go through and clothes that you can buy, souvenirs to get, but I had this absolute obsession because I kept seeing it in every single store. I really wanted a llama and I could not justify getting this little thing because one, where am I going to put it in the house? And two, I'm not going to carry this on a freaking trail, but it's so cute and it's adorable and it was like $4. Of course I want it and it's so poofy. It's so fluffy! and you're that type of person to buy t-shirts for every family member go to the post office drop it off i believe it was like i want to say it was like around 50 dollars, but we had like a lot we had like a fairly large box and we mailed it to ourselves and as soon as we got back from the trip it came within a week so it was like perfect timing it was definitely better to just buy everything you want you're only there once and just mail it to yourself so you don't have to either get a porter. So that's pretty much everything that I have to say. P.S. Random fact. Random, random fact. Cusco Airport has closing hours. But more detail into that little story in my next video about my Inca Trail adventure. So I hope you guys have found this helpful give it a thumbs up if you did hit the subscribe button down below it is free and all it does is notify you every single time i upload a new video bye yes this is my lazy dog say hi goop yeah you're so cute